So one of the most interesting and challenging things in the Elliott Wave principle are the corrections. We're taking a look at the S&P 500 and we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about corrections. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliott Wave Cafe and this is Chart of the Day. Let's get started. All right, so I've been talking about the S&P 500 for a few sessions now, and um, I think it's a you know a good day to jump in and talk a little bit about corrections, what they mean, what they are, um, and basically the bottom line, the bottom question is how do you know uh, when a correction is likely over, complete? We all would like to you know be as quickly and as close as possible to a low. In any type of correction because you know not only it gives you a lot of satisfaction that you caught something right at the bottom but it also also can give you very very nice returns if you do that but it's also a very dangerous play right so that's why um, you know calling for the end of the corrections it's um, it's a very dangerous game and and Elliott wave principle it's uh, it's a great tool uh, but it has its fallacies right it can um, it can lead you to, you know, to great wins, but it can also, um, you know, lead you to great losses if you um, are too quick in your judgment um, to believe and to assume that something is over when it's actually not over. So I just wanted to kind of start with that and, and just a quick history in here. I'm not sure how many of you guys are already very familiar with this. I'm assuming a lot of you that are following this channel along are very, um, you know, kind of... Uh, invested and already know a lot about the Elliott Wave principle. But basically, when we look at corrections, we have three types of corrections. We have zigzags, which you can see in here, you have an ABC. You have a flat correction, you have an A, B, and then C, and then you have a triangle. Now, corrections are pretty simple. I mean, uh, zigzags are pretty simple. They just go down in A, five waves. You go up in B, in three waves, and then you come back down in C. And there are certain rules. I'm not going to get into all the details, like kind of how high this B wave usually goes, and, and you know uh, how does C wave look, and relationships and things of that nature. Uh, and then you have the flats, which are a little bit different. So you can look at the flat, which is a three moves in down in, in wave A. You have three moves in wave B, and then five waves in move C. So and these flats can be you know different kinds. You can have a regular flat when this B wave stays below the origin of the wave A right there, uh, retraces about 90% of AA, and then, you know, C wave never comes below the end of the wave A. This is what we call a regular flat. Three waves in A, three waves in B, five waves in C. The B wave can go higher, and C wave doesn't have to come below wave A, but B wave goes higher. This we call this a running flat, as long as C wave stays above the wave A low. The structure is the same, 3, 3, 5, except that B wave makes a new high. If B wave makes a new high and C wave makes a new low below the A wave, this is called it's an expanded flat. It's expanded, it's expanded, right? B wave goes up above the origin of the wave A, C below the A. So 3, 3, 5, it's the same structure. It's just the way this B wave and this C wave gets placed. And then the last correction that we have, it's a triangle. And these can be different shapes as well. So you can have contracting triangle when B wave, C wave, D wave, and they all kind of converge. You can have them expanded. You know, when, when B wave is larger, you know, C wave goes up, D wave comes down, and then E wave goes up like that. You can have some expanding triangles like that. Uh, in the contracting variety, you know, these are the most simple and basic things. You can have, you know, a few barrier triangles in here. You can have a B and D wave to be at about the same level. Um, you know, if it's something like that, you can have B wave coming below the origin of the wave A, uh, like that, and then you call this a running triangle. Uh, when B wave gets, this is a bearish triangle, so you go A, B, C, D, and E, B wave comes below the origin of the wave A, and we call this a running triangle. So if I flip it over, it kind of looks like that. So these are, you know, just several types of corrections. Now, all of these corrections, all of these type of corrections here, um, can be combined together in different ways and they make a complex pattern which is the WXY or a WXYXZ. So for example this wave W in here 
can be a zigzag. You take this and you put it in there, and that's a wave W. An X wave could be a flat, so you can take that X wave, that this flat, and put it inside the X wave, and that's part of that move. And then you can get a Y wave that can be a zigzag, it can be a triangle, it can be a, a flat as well. So this Y wave could be, you know, any number of things. The only thing that this wave uh, uh, W in here cannot be, it cannot be a triangle. So you're not going to find that. So all these are combinations. You can have two zigzags. You can have it in here, and you can have it in here. In, in, in wave W, and you can have it in the wave Y. So that we call that a double zigzag. So these are, you know, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. I've done videos on this channel about the complex corrections. Maybe I'll do some more on it. Um, you know, they're very interesting. They're very hard. They're very complex, and they're, they're, they're tricky. And uh, what we do as elioticians, as traders learning this methodology or, or, or trying to kind of walk our way through it and, and uh, you know, uh, learn its language, um, we basically, we know that these patterns exist and then we apply them to the price action and we say, fine, I mean, this looks pretty interesting in here. It's a three wave mo. I mean, you know, I can fit that in there and that's maybe an ABC. Well, you know, this, this wave in here came down and, and, you know, you have what it looks to be maybe an impulse in here, you know, one, two, three, maybe a big four and a five. And then you go up in this B wave right there and you come down in C. One of the things that we look for in, in, in this methodology is equality. Wave C usually equals wave A in length. So you can take that and apply it right there and look, hey, is this move from this highs to this lows, is it equal with this move from this highs to this lows? You know, that's a pretty good clue that maybe you have, um, you know, a, 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 um, just a simple zigzag, five, three, five. Now, the question is, how do you know if that's complete, right? Because basically what you're looking for is you're looking for this um, this move? If I can find my arrow here that's been hiding from me, uh, okay, there it is. I think it's here. You've been looking to see if you can make some dough <laughs> by the market moving to new highs, right? And you're seeing this move, and you're like, man, this looks great. You know, let's just kind of jump in, and and uh, you know, we're going to go to new all-time highs. And um, you know, you're starting to buy, very excited that you know your methodology and things look good. And then all of a sudden. You know, you come back a couple of weeks later or a few days later and this thing moves lower like that. Does a little bit of a pause right there and then you're you're like, you know, holy crap, what just happened? You know, this Elliott wave doesn't work. So, uh, you have a couple of choices here. Um, you can either do what I just told you and just say, fine, you have equality and this is your only, um, you know, evidence uh, that this correction is complete. Uh, the second one would be that you would look inside this wave and you would start to count five waves. You would go in a one, two, three, four, five. Since we know that the C wave needs to have five waves, then you would have to look for those five waves inside here. And, and, you know, maybe you can come up with those. Maybe you can't. Maybe it's, maybe it's a very hard thing to do. And if it's too hard to do, then maybe, you know, maybe that's not done yet. Maybe it's not complete. So you got to look inside that structure. Maybe in here, you know, you find them and you say, fine, that's okay. So now let's say you find five waves in here. You find another, uh, um, you know, five waves in here. And you say, well, now I got two pieces of evidence, right? Wave C equals wave A. Not only that, but there's five waves in here. There's another five waves in here. Bam, we're going to rally and go to new highs. Okay, you know, fair assumption. But do you really know for sure has the price moved? Has the price showed you in any way that this is actually what you're thinking? Um, does it, you know, did it give you any any other evidence in there? And um, you know, so far the market is still kind of hovering, uh, you know, near these lows. And you're like, well, I have two pieces of evidence. That's enough for me. I'm going to jump in and, and and take a long position. And sure enough, maybe the market goes a little bit higher in here and just starts. And you get excited and say, man, I think I caught this low. And then what happens next is this market pushes lower and does that. Okay. And now you're like, man, what's going on here? The early wave doesn't work. I, you know, I saw five waves, you know, things were looking pretty good in here and, um, you know, we're starting to make new lows. Well, you're faced with an option. You're like, well, if I bought it in here, then I have to get out because, you know, this market did not do what I was expecting it to do. And if you don't get out, that means that, you know, you're not respecting your methodology, right? Because you said, well, you know, I'm counting five waves. It's done. Let's move higher. What if you make a new low? That means that those five waves are not done. Um, and you're getting out of the market. So that's kind of goes through my mind. And this is kind of what happens. So now the market makes a new low and you're like, well, 
you know, what's going on here? Well, um, maybe what you thought it's a five wave move, it was only, you know, wave one of a, a, a much larger correction. And this wave two was very short and you're actually beginning a larger decline. Maybe you did not count it as the right way, and maybe there was another fourth way forming in there with another five forming right now. You know, and then what happens is now you start not to have equality anymore because this lag in here, the C wave becomes bigger than this one, and that starts to destroy your confidence. I say, well, I thought zigzags are about equality. You know, now how far down they can go? Can they go 138%? Can they go 161.8%? And all of a sudden, um, you know, things are starting to change on you. And maybe this, instead of becoming a, uh, a three-wave move, becomes a five-wave move. And it's happening like that. You go in a one, two, you go down in a three, four, and five. And now you don't have a ABC, but instead you have a one, two, three, four, five, which can be wave A of that ABC. So you're going to take this and this whole structure from here, it's actually just this wave A. That's five waves. And then pushes higher in B, and then it comes back down in C. So you're changing the degree of trends. So anyway, I don't want to go to that, but um, going back to the evidence. Now, you buying in here, right, only on this, based on these two pieces of evidence, right, it's a riskier move, it could work, and you can push to new all-time highs, right? And you say, fine, you know, this time it worked, and it looked pretty good, and I have, you know, uh, uh, scenarios, I have three waves in here, and I have equality, plus I have a five-wave decline. Now, the next thing that I usually watch for and I look for is um, some fib retracements of this latest leg. Okay, so I go and I take my fib tool retracement and I place it up at the top there and down low here. And now I wanted to see this market not only that it rallies, but that it rallies in such a way that it overtakes 61.8% retracement of this leg this decline and it pushes higher in this case above 4300 you know but then you're saying well yeah but if i do that you know then then you know uh, uh, by that time it's going to be too late and and then you know I, i'm going to lose a lot of uh, um, you know percentage gains you know well that's your call um if you want to buy here you're going to face more risk and you're going to get more returns if you're going to buy after this happens then you're going to face less risk, right? But you're also going to get less returns. So every game has got a gotcha. This market is not just going to hand it to you on a silver platter. You're going to have to make decisions in how you want to approach it. So if you're going to buy into a downtrend, you have to know, um, and into a correction that might not be finished, you have to know that this thing pushes lower and can stop you out. And you destroy the mental uh, capital that you have into the trade because you're going to get stopped out a few times. If you wait for a confirmation in here, you might have more of a short thing, right? But you're probably not going to get as good of a return. Now, the question is, are you going to give up these returns from here to here for safety and for you to be able to gain returns from here on out, pushing much, much higher? Okay. Because once this happens, you know, it starts to be much more likely that this move is going to continue higher. And one of those clues is the 618 that I'm watching. This percentage right there. If we move back above that, it's very likely that this correction could be complete. And the reason I say that is because of that. Um, when you begin a decline, and it's in three ways, it can always be a 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. So you look at this moving here, it can be a wave one, this could be a wave two, this could be another wave one and another wave two, and then crash lower in a large third of a third. Now, if this push in here gets below 618, gets above 618, it's very unlikely that this is going to be a second wave. Okay, it's going to be very unlikely that this will be a second wave pushing higher. Usually second waves, especially at the second degree, the market is rushing so much to sell lower the underlying weakness of this market is so strong that um, you're only going to retrace maybe 38%, maybe not even 50%, and then you're just going to completely crash lower. So the fact that you're going to climb about 618, that's a big clue. Usually the first second wave goes into the 618, maybe even the 78.6% retracement, but the second two doesn't go that high. So that's why that's a clue. That's why that's a clue. You know, write this down. This is very important. 
if you climb back above those levels, it's 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 a you know, it's one of the clues. Now it's not a sure thing. Nothing ever is, right? And that's why we go. That's why this methodology is an evidence-based approach. It's depending on the level of evidence you have to continue to believe in your in your uh, you know assumptions or not to believe in your assumptions. So here is what happens. What if the market does this? So you go in a wave one or go in A, B, C, and then the market does this. You go up in A, down in B, and then up in C. Now what if you see this move in here, right? And you see a very sloppy and kind of choppy, and you see a three wave move up like that. Unless this extends higher, and that becomes a larger third wave, right? If you do a three wave kind of setback and you start to get resistance into the 618, then you know something fishy is going on and you're likely going to sell lower. So that's, again, it's another evidence that the market gives you. Okay, it's not a confirmation to get really, really bullish um, if this happens. So that's why you got to wait and see what's happening at the 618 level right there. First of all, is how you travel. If you travel like this, if you start to go higher, you know, in a one, two, three, four, five, in five waves, and you're kind of climbing like that, and you have a nice impulse, then it's very likely that the second move down in here, um, you know, that this move is going to be a, uh, you know, a nice little pullback in three waves, and then the market will shoot higher from there. And now you have a better confirmation. So the other, so, so, so that's, that's a that's the strongest piece of evidence that you can have to think that a correction is complete. You come in an equality move, you see five waves in here, you see five waves in here, you see a five wave from the low, preferably above the 618 retracement of this move, then you're gonna get a second uh, you know a three wave pullback in here that you can get in, which stops below this low, and then you can uh, you know have a fair assumption, a fair calculation that this market could move higher. Sure, it might not work. This thing could push back lower. And this thing could be just a flat, or the market has other thoughts, the structure changes, life life, life changes, and you're going to go, you know. But at least what you did have, you know, you were prepared. You did something that you were supposed to do, and you looked at the pieces of evidence in there, and you, and you did your homework. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, the other thing is this. You're going to have to study what's going on inside the structure. So if you look at this daily charts in here, right there, you're going to have some swing levels. You're going to have this one in here. You're going to have this one in here. And then obviously you're going to have the biggest one of them all, which is that right in there. That's a big one. 46.39. Ideally, ideally, you might want to wait until that level gets taken out. Because this is the lower high from the market. The market is in a downtrend. The market is correcting. You have no idea how far it's going to go. To convince you that this correction is over, you got to make, you know, a, a higher low in here. Do I say that right? So lower highs in here, and then you got to push up in here and take this low. Okay. So. 46.39 would be one of the indicators that will tell you that this market is about to rally higher. If you break above this and close above that, you know, you might get some whipsaw in the meantime because this market can pull back, like I said, a little bit back in here. Right? It's not just going to hand it to you and say, oh, you broke above that, it's, it's time to rally. What they're going to do usually, they're going to come back and say, ah, you bought the breakout sucker, here it is a pullback. So then you're like, you're starting to doubt yourself and say, oh my goodness, you know, I thought that this is going to be a, you know, a free ride higher and this doesn't happen. I'm getting a pullback. Okay. So you have to be prepared for that. If you're going to buy above this level with the confirmation, you're going to have to be prepared that you might be able to get a pullback. So maybe what you do is you don't buy the whole thing. You just buy a little bit of a position here to test the market. If the market comes back, it does go in three ways, then you add to that position. All the while, while knowing that if you're going to sell below 78.6 of this in here, right? Guys, I'm giving you here a lot of information. This is, you know, for our paid members and it's in the course and stuff like that. So, so I talk about this all day in the room and when we talk strategies and trades and stuff like that. But this is important. This stuff, you're not going to find it in a lot of places. People are not going to tell you this, this tricks. Okay. So you're going to go up in there and then 
if you come back and you start to break below 50% and 618, then you might be in trouble, okay? Because this move was probably another failed move. What is that failed move? I'll show you in a second. It's right here. It's going to be this guy. Right there. Okay, you're going to have a W and that's going to be an X wave right there. And then you're going to get the next sell of lower. Okay, so sometimes these X waves, they quickly go back above that level, but they don't necessarily, you know, uh, uh, are, are very, very strong. So they just kind of go there, maybe, maybe take the high a little bit of this move right there. Okay, of 46.39, and then they reverse lower. Because these X waves are tricky. They Sometimes they look impulsive. Sometimes they look like a three wave. You know, they're fools rallies. Very, very fools rallies, just like B waves are. X waves are notorious because they connect. So then you get an X sell off, which can be anything. It can be a triangle, a flat, or a triangle in this Y wave. Okay, so that's why waiting for that to be taken out, you know, it's, a, it's an important thing, but it can be tricky. So you got to be prepared, you know, that that could be, you have to think about it, that that could be a failed move. Right, and the moment the higher you go above that, about forty six thirty nine, the more you're going to trust that this move is actually making you highs, and you're ready to kind of push higher. So, it doesn't come easy, but there are levels that you can watch. So, for example, once again, you can go back above this forty three. You know, this would be the first kind of swing level. If you get above that level, that's pretty good. You know, now the market it's looking interesting, and and you have something to work with. That's the retracement right there. Okay, you can see that they come at pretty much the same level right now. If this is the low, I'm not saying that's the low. So that's 61.8 is 43.22. So you get back above that level 43.6. That means that this correction, you know, maybe it's over and it's got time to continue to run higher. You got to study these and then look also at the channel. The channels are very important as well. If you break to the top of this channel, you know, it, this, this thing might happen, for example, right here. Because the market is going to climb and then come back down and then maybe it's going to happen like this. You know, you're still going to be kind of further out from this level. You know, it's like, well, I didn't really take it, but, you know, I didn't really take 46.39, but I broke through the channel. But well, doesn't matter. That's still a very good signal. So now, you know, you're starting to have a little bit more confidence that you might be moving to new highs in here. Okay, so watch those 618 levels. You know, watch the climb out of here if it's impulsive or corrective. Uh, watch the swing highs, and that's how you slowly start to get confirmation of a move. Some people will go in a very small time frame, and it will go from a one day to a six hour and say, do I see a five wave move? Am I ready to buy? That's fine. Just be prepared. Just be prepared that, you know, that if you're doing that right on the smaller time frame, you're changing a little bit the rules of the game, okay? Because, uh, you know, if you're going to be looking on the daily time frames in here, you kind of have to respect these, okay? So... Uh, this this might you know if you go back to a four hour chart you might see a five wave move in there and say ah, you know we're coming off the lows let's see what happens but this could be just wave A and then a B and then a quick C wave and then you crash lower again okay so just be prepared for that um, so the higher you go on the daily time frames in here and the better this kind of structure looks uh, you know if it starts to look like a nice V shape you know that's even better so this is how you can tell if a correction is over okay it, it, it's 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 a it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of waiting, okay? There's a lot of false starts in here. You can get, um, you know, you can get, uh, um, let's say, disappointed with a lot of that stuff because, you know, sometimes you just go complex and the market is going to throw you an X wave and then it's going to go back down. I mean, look at the odds, right? The other thing that you have to think of is, and I'm going to kind of close off with this since this video gets too long. Oh my goodness, 24 minutes. Um, the other thing that you have to think about is how big this correction is. This whole thing, starting from here to here. Compare to this whole advance, right? And you're always asking yourself, well, is this little blip in here enough to correct this advance? Does it look right? Can you just kind of start a big rally out of here? And it looks quite disproportionate. So this in the, this this here tells you that mm, you might be doing something like that, okay, to get a little bit better proportion. So whilst while a rally it's possible, 
from these levels, and I think it is. I think actually, you know, we're overdue for one. We'll see how far it travels. We'll check back in. We'll see how far it travels. We'll see when we're going to go to 618 or to 50%. We'll see how that's going to look. We're going to continue to monitor that uh, in, my, in, my, in my future videos. But you have to be prepared that this counter trend, this could be just a counter trend move in an X wave, and then you crash lower again in this wave I, Y towards the end of the year. That's why I'm kind of bullish, you know, near term here, maybe for the next four or five months um, until we're getting maybe in the fall. And in the fall, you, the markets are going to crash again and come back lower and make this correction a little bit more substantial and a little bit more proportionate with the latest advance in here that we've had since COVID lows. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm at. Usually we take it one step at a time in our approach. You know, um, you might have thought, you know, and it's a, a fair assumption. You might have thought that this was the end of the correction and it wasn't. The market gave you a full rally right there and we came back down. Now you might think that it's going to do it again and, you know, it's going to be the end and you're going to, maybe it's not going to do it. It's just going to do that in one more time. Maybe the next one is not going to be and it's going to come back down. Okay. So this can happen. It's very, very possible. You can get all kind of flats in here. You can get a triangle in the middle of this, uh, you know, of this B wave in here, right? It can become, even if it's a complex WXY or an ABC, you can get a triangle in here like that. And then, you know, that's the move. A, triangle, B down in C. So there's a lot of things that can happen in these corrections and we take them step by step. And I talk about them, you know, in the program with the members and they, you know, they know my approach and kind of how we're looking at coins and things like that. So, um, you know, hopefully this was a good presentation. I don't know, you know, how many people are going to get to kind of see this. Hopefully this is helpful. I'm going to, you know, share it around, see if it, you know, helps your friends, stuff like that. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Um, you know, let me know your comments. Come and visit me in the pro room. Be part of my team. Let's let's uh, let's trade together. Let's um, you know, give me your questions. Show me your charts. Um, you know, we've had a webinar this morning. It was about a, you know an hour and a half. We talked about all kind of all kind of stuff in there. It was pretty awesome. So, um, you know, interesting stuff. Elliott wave is awesome, but you know you have to be patient with it, and um, you have to know when you're wrong and and when things kind of change. All right. So I'll leave it at that. I appreciate you being here, and I'll talk later. Bye bye.